Okay, so my kit's crazy for this weekend. A uh, bunch of really weird stuff uh, that I would normally never pack food-wise. Um, some ridiculous bulky things. So I never pack like this, so I thought it'd be cool to show you guys what's in my kit um, for this weekend, just to document it. It's just really bizarre stuff, but I just kind of feel like having a, a bonkers weekend. All right, let's get to it. Okay, so there's my new pack. That is a Super Tayoga by Kelty. Uh, it's one of the last packs I think that Dick Kelty helped design after he sold the company. Um, okay, real quick, we have the Haversack. Made his file Haversack. Usually, I carry... Usually I carry... What's my stool? Not my stool. Usually I carry like... Uh, my meat, my meat in there. When I do an overnight, I'm just gonna have fun with this video, guys. Let's have a little fun here. Right on, can kind of see me. Okay, so usually, back up, because I have bubbles break. Usually, um, I eat bannock or bannock mix. Um, for breakfast, and you should keep that in my kit, my food pouch, and one of my uh, utility bags, utility pouches. And um, yeah, this is my breakfast, and sometimes I have it at night, uh, Banach. And other than that, I usually bring like tea and a bunch of meat. I usually bring like six, you know, chicken breasts or tenders, um, a package of bacon. Um, a duck breast uh, and ribeye steak, like stuff like that. Sometimes two or three of those kind of, you know, bacon, duck, um, and chicken, kind of whatever, you know. Maybe only two chicken breasts if I want to bring a duck for the weekend. So I, I try to plan it out. And if it's cold, then I turn that chicken into like chicken soup, right? Or uh, I'll fry it up in, uh, you know, my little bushcraft kit, in a little pan. Um, or I cook it right on the rock. Um, or I'll, you know, put up in the air and panace it. Like I do that with duck, because duck has so much fat content. Just, you know, stick a, a, a stick through it and and put it over the fire. And um, that's amazing. Or right on the rock, right on the embers. I mean, there's a million ways. Um, and I don't use cooking equipment for that. Um, I usually don't bring a, a billy can with me um, unless I'm gonna make soup. <clears throat> if I make tea and stuff, it's right in my mugs. Um, but if it's winter, I'm going to make soup, then I bring a billy can, um, or, um, if I'm going to make beans, maple beans, I'll, I'll bring a bill, uh, my, my billy can for that. You know, it's depending, like, what I'm going to cook, it changes my kit. So, regardless, the haversack is usually, like, a ton of meat, you know, a big bag of meat, basically, and, um, I have the carbs and stuff in my bag, all the dry stuff there, the fresh stuff here. That's not the case this time. There's no meat here at all. Um, that was the first deviation from the normal route that I take. Now, it's like 100 degrees like every day right now. So, like, cranking hot. And so that had a lot to do with my change. Um, although, normally I, I do almond milk because it stays fresh all the time. It's almond milk. I decided to go with... <laughs> this is a crazy, crazy pack. That's why I'm making this video. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna show you about the milk in there. Anyways, um, so what do I have in my haversack? Uh, this happens to be the Ranger Green haversack. A design that we sell on our shop. Got the two-tone going, even on, uh, even inside the pocket. I think it's cool. Um, valuables pouch, right? 
military velcro valuables pouch and a survival knife keep that in there which is very typical um, I don't need anything in there okay so instead of a bunch of meat I have my headlamp uh, my smoking kit and toilet paper and I also use this for blowing my nose which um, I do a lot of in the woods I used to carry my kits completely different than when I started I used to use a little canvas ruck and in my back pocket I had um, the never-ending tissue I had um, cotton bandana I literally would like blow my nose until it was completely full and wash it all out and dry it out over the fire and I actually would hang it up uh, over my, my hammock uh, on my ridge line inside and just you know when it's dry use it again or even when it's not if I was sick anyways um, I don't do that anymore and I used to use leaves so I, I mean this is like extra stuff I never I never carried toilet paper before and I just started doing that kinda recently um, inside I keep my headlamp in there because it's like when it gets dark out I don't want to start fumbling around on my pack trying to find what pouch my my headlamp is in and all the you know all those shenanigans just crazy talk going through 70 liters of stuff and you know that the, the, the haversack just holds things that I, I need to get like if I have to go to the bathroom like it hits me right away it's nope oh, time to go I can just grab my haversack boom ready to go it's dark ready to go like the quick stuff you know um, this is like temporary stuff the pipe normally it's just a bag of meat so and I usually put the the toilet paper and headlamp like in this uh, behind the pocket pouch right there's a pocket behind the pocket I usually stuff it in there it's usually half a bag a half of a half of a, um, a roll of toilet paper I squeeze it down it's like really thin slide it in there well that's all used up I got a big fatty one in there this pipe is made for me I carry two pipes right <laughs> wicked normal um, this pipe was made for me by my dear friend Dave up in Canada. Lives by uh, by the ocean, up on a cliff in a little cottage. Visited him a few years ago. Um, did some videos, foraging, hanging out with him and stuff. Yeah, he made me this pipe. I carved him a pipe. He carved me a pipe. And uh, yeah, this is a this is a solid item that's in the kit. That doesn't go away, even though I have this other pipe. I keep them both. Also inside my pipe pouch, strike anywhere it matches. I'm gonna bring you guys closer. How do you feel about that? Wanna be closer? Is this too close? <laughs> oh boy. Matches. I know, it's, everything's blown out. I'm going to have to put the exposure down when I'm editing because I have a bare bulb in this room. It's pretty awful. Yeah, wooden matches. I also have uh, paper matches and a lighter in there. Um, yeah, so inside here is like my um, my natural smokables. Uh, Mullen that I use for screens. Um, Stagger and Sumac after it's been kissed by the frost, as they say. Turns red. It's in like Knick Knick or something. Um, let's see. I've got like a book on smokables. It's pretty cool. Sweet fern, wintergreen, uh, mint. I'm just literally looking inside here, seeing what's here. There's just a bunch of stuff. Anyways, right on. Natural smokables. And some organic tobacco. I think it's from it's pipe tobacco from Kentucky or something, I don't know. It's organic, USDA labeled a whole bit. Which I think is pretty cool, it's organic. I'm not big on the uh, tobacco, hence the, the natural, natural stuff. But every once in a while. Okay, so that's my haversack kit. Again, it's not, that's not typical. But, uh, you know, I mean, it's a bunch of meat. Okay. So this video is suddenly becoming really long, I apologize already. Alright, let's get to the main kit. Okay, the kit. 
Dun 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 dun. Look at right on. Um, yeah, the Super Tioga. Um, can hold a ton of stuff up to here. Uh, my gear is not even to the top the bar, and I have stuff in there. It's crazy, crazy bulky. You're gonna laugh actually when you see. <laughs> I just, you know. I'm gonna have a silly weekend. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, it's like I'm car camping out of my backpack. You ever wonder how to car camp out of your backpack? You're gonna learn how to do that today. Alright. Make sure all this is out of the way. Oh, actually, something in the lid. Is the lid? I do this, actually. I like doing this. For how many days I'm going to be out, I'm going to go out for a week, whatever it is, I put that many in. Cliff Bars. I like the Blueberry Crisp. It's pretty good. I throw it inside my, uh, my lid. Put it on my bag. I always have a pocket up front, you know, up top. Nice and easy. Snack. One per day, if I need it. No big deal. Nice fall hat. Right on. Okay, so let's go over the outside of the pack real quick. And it, it's gonna be quick. I'm not I'm not gonna mess around here. So I have my quiver um, lashed to my rook. Got a bunch of arrows in here. Um, I mean these been these have been with me for years all over the place to Vancouver Island, all sorts of stuff. Right on. Um I always have like a dirty pocket. I always have a dirty pocket. And me personally, dirty pocket? No. Okay, so dirty pockets uh, for me are important because it's just for like, it's just like for random things. Like after I blow my nose, uh, I throw it in the dirty pocket. Or um, it's kind of like the trash bag in a way. Um, for this, for, for like my, my other Kelty, usually it's like one pocket for that kind of stuff. For this particular one, it's kind of a, a mix of a dirty pocket. I already decided that if I blow my nose, I'm going to put it inside my behind sleeve of my haversack. Um, but like dirty rags, dirty spoons, cooking stuff, dirty pocket, dirty plank, that kind of stuff goes in here. So I have my first aid kit right up top. Doesn't really match the dirty theme, um, on the contrary, actually. But um, I want it like front and center, out in the open. I can just grab my first aid kit. Just right up top, right in the center, right in the middle. It's not in a side pocket, it's not underneath things. I don't have to dig. It's not even in the, the, the lid where I have to fool around I mean like I might only have the use of one hand you know like I just want to if I have to I can just tear this open you know like I'm not messing around with that so I always keep a first aid kit out in the open as it were uh, the rest of this pocket is simple my spoon plank cooking plank Uh, bushcraft cooking kit. It's really like an old military style kit, right? But it's good for bushcraft too. It's a woodcraft kit, man. Yeah, so it has like a, a double plate dish, yada yada. I keep my uh, my bandanas in there because they're going to be dirty and nasty. Two bandanas. One to wipe me and be clean, and the other one as um, like to wipe the food out of my you know, like for di for doing dishes, basically. So one of these is going to get disgusting, and it will stay in this pan. And the other one is for wiping me. You know, I try to keep them separate. I'll throw it in the bag or whatever. I usually keep the, the food, you know, like oatmeal and stuff. It gets stuck to the fibers. Um, so I keep it inside, like, a pan or inside my cooking pot, whatever, if I have a billy can with me, that kind of thing. So, anyways, only other thing in here is a little plastic bag which is certainly new I didn't never put that in my kit but it'd be good for trash 
make sure I uh, pack everything out. Obviously, I'm going to be trash in the woods. Never do that. That's it. That's that pouch. I mean, obviously, a lot more room for stuff. It's a pretty big bag. A lot of room. Okay, so, real quick, what else do we have? Side pocket. Well, behind the side pocket, I have a sleeve. This is a total impromptu video, guys. We're just we're just kind of having fun here. Um, side pocket, right. Is that, will that be too bright for you? Nah, just up, just right back there. Okay, so I have my tent poles right there, and they're lashed. There's a, a lash point right there in the back, which is amazing. Um, Dick Kelty was a legend for a reason. And I decided to go with the tent theme, and this whole, this is a big pocket, this whole pocket, this is like my tent. It barely fits, but it's in there. Just to show you real quick. Hopefully it's not going to get torn up. It won't. There's the bottom of the tent. There's the fly to the tent. It's my tent. It actually is a, a Kelty tent, I think. That's kind of silly. Kelty all around. I am actually am a big Kelty fan. I have like one, two, three, four Kelty backpacks. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I never really counted them up before, but I guess I have four Kelty backpacks. Interesting. Right on. That's it. It's a shelter. On this side. I have a few things. On top is my canteen. Uh, clue canteen, you know, big, big one. I don't know, I don't know what size it is. And uh, I have a cup nested underneath it. Behind, there's a, there's a pocket behind that. It's pretty cool. Behind that, I have an extra cup, an extra mug down there. Give the old close up, eh? There she is, or he, or it. Mug. It's a glacier mug. I made my own handles for it. So I didn't like theirs. Orientation was wrong. I, this is a mug. Right. Right on. Butterfly handles. Yeah. I just stuffed that behind. This is the first time I'm using this rug, so. I'm still kind of learning what I want to do with it. And there's my canteen in there, which doesn't really have any water and it's empty right now. So I have three, two things you guys don't see right now. I have um, three gallons of water in my truck. And I have, cause I'm going off for three days. So I like to bring a gallon per day if I can, when there's no water source or else I'll boil the water there. Um, and my toothbrush upstairs. Actually, my wooden spoon, my other pocket here, um, is what I use every day for tea. So I'm going to have to um, bring that back upstairs when I'm done. I just brought it down here just for the for the video, honestly. Uh, I use it every day. So, Anyways, I just clip it behind. Well, at least I'm, I'm trying it out. I mean, I don't want to sound like this is what I do every day. Been using this bag for 25 years, brother. No, it's the first time. Okay, underneath that, bring you guys down there. Drop it down with the sound effect. Okay, so there's two, there's two pockets that are identical. This one has the behind the pocket, the whole bit. Uh, inside here is my, uh, my tarp. That's all is in there. That is a Equinox 8x10 Ultralight 1.1 uh, Sil Nylon tarp, which is why it can fit in such a small package. I mean, that, that tarp literally is 8x10 and 
I'm not kidding. It it's this big. That thick. It's it's like when it's all folded up. It's just remarkable. It's amazing. Uh, I've had this for I don't know seven years. I bought two of them. A green one, a grommet ripped out, and a, uh, and a thunderstorm in New Hampshire mountains. Uh, I just tied a rock into it. Um, I still have it. I almost never use it, but I used it with the rock in it for three years probably. <laughs> <laughs> Replace the grommet with a rock. Um, yeah, and this is secondary. This one has a bunch of holes in it and stuff. I just resprayed it. It's it's kind of a it's gonna get it's gonna get replaced probably really by like next week. So um, whatever. This will be the last trip for that one I think. And I just have um, the tie outs and all that stuff. You know, cordage for said tarp. <clears throat> so that's my living room tarp. On the other side of the bag over here is my tent so my shelter is on the outside okay so I mean there's there's a method to this right it's not just total madness um, I have my shelter needs on the outside of the bag I don't have to do anything I mean this is literally a, grab my tarp and I have my my tent right there goes underneath um, have my knife and ferro rod for fire inside my haversack. It's outside my bag as well. Like I haven't opened up my bag yet. And I have my first aid kit. I have my living room. I have my bedroom. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm sitting pretty good. So I like to put all that stuff on the outside if possible. Um, yeah, right on. Let's carry on, shall we? We're actually almost done. Um, along the bottom, of the rock. This is a uh, external, by the way. External frame. I like external frames. They're cool. Um, sleeping bag. You know, in its um, stuff sack that it's been waterproof. I sprayed this down with uh, with silicone. I don't know, like a week ago. And uh, I just have a buckle. Um, holding it to the frame and something I, I usually don't bring but I decided to it's like 100 degrees am I gonna need this probably not but at 3 in the morning it's probably gonna be like 65 or 70 degrees and that's 30 degrees difference than 100 which is a lot that's a big deal that's like um, it being 30 degrees like freezing but it was 60 degrees which is like you know, springtime, summertime, kind of 60 degrees, 70 degrees out, or 30 or 40 at night. That's a big, that's a big swing. 30, 35 degrees is a big swing. And in in um, in New England, in Massachusetts, at this time of the year, um, you know, going into fall, like that's that happens for sure. I've seen it happen in July where it's like 60 degrees at night and it's like 105 during the day brutal anyways um like freezing at night because you got no 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 bag with you nothing that's you know that's the last time i did that <laughs> um sleeping pad just uh ultralight you know whatever it is i don't even remember anymore it's like the best one you can get i guess i don't know uh my buddy uses it and he's an ultralight freak so i got it he like cut it down and stuff so it's you now you know you know yeah, yeah, yeah. We know those guys. They're awesome. They're they're very tinkerish. I didn't even clean my room, so I apologize if you find it messy. I like games. Right on. That's an old. That's an original Star Wars poster for the NES. Old school. Just quick, quick aside. These are from uh, when I was in uh, elementary school. And my trapper keeper. It's like legit, man. Old school. Got some games down here. It's like my game room. Got some cabinets down here. That's like potentially my favorite game of all time. I'm a big Duck Hunt fan. Big time. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, the middle of the bucket. That's it. That's it, guys. We're almost done.
and girls, the gang, friends, fans, family. Right on, I'm gonna kill the light back here. Or knock it out, like I say to my kids. Like, like if we're playing a game and you're like killing people, you know, even like in like Mario Brothers where you like jump on a, like a Goomba, like the mushroom guys and knock them out. Like you knock them out. See, it's just so natural. Just you knock them out, you knock them off the board. It's the same to kill them. Not good for kids. Okay, anyways, uh, don't know where I'm going with that. <clears throat> okay, it's like three in the morning. I should be sleeping hours ago. Um, right on. This is why I'm always tired when I get to camp. Okay, so the main bucket um, will be easy. Actually, I'm gonna roll this up and make it even easier. I'm gonna do a better job rolling it. Dude, this thing like it's huge. I can have this thing overstuffed, like, seriously, like, that high. Like, that's, that's huge, dude. It's huge. I don't really, I hope I never do that. <laughs> I hope I never do that. Oh, man. Oh, man, my back. I can only imagine. Okay. Kind of in there. Kind of in there. Right on. So, okay, so I told you that I did some crazy packing, right? That's that's why we're here, because the packing is weird. Um, yeah, it comes some serious weird stuff. I mean, usually, like, already some stuff is weird, right? Like, the meat is gone. Um, sipping pad, I don't do too often. Um, like, kind of like, almost never, like one out of five times, probably. Um, yeah, everything else is kind of the same so far, I guess. I don't I don't always bring my bow. It comes to weird stuff. Check it out. So, I'm going to move you up. Bam. So, what do we have in the bag? <laughs> you see that? Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? I see a big container of strawberries. I'm starving. I want to eat these. Oh, man. Um, usually, I bring for fruit. I usually bring um, a container of blueberries or uh, a banana a day. So, like, three bananas, that kind of thing. So, strawberries it is, which I have never done before. I'm looking forward to the difference. But, I mean, big, bulky, heavy, whatever. Okay, I'm going, I'm going with that. You know, with my old green backpack, this would be like, this is as wide as the bucket was, probably. <laughs> I could fit this much. I could, you know, that was it. That was the bucket. It'd be like three of these. Okay, so right up top, I have my rain shell, my jacket. I can't believe I'm taking this apart right now after all that packing. Oh, man. That's okay. I love you guys for it. Okay, so right underneath that. I have my rain pants, actually not rain pants, um, my, actually what book was it, I don't know, I was reading an old book and they call them something else, because they're pants that go, they're rain pants that go over my normal pants, they're oversized and they allow me to get to my pockets inside, which these totally do, um, they're not like rain pants that you wear instead of your normal pants, so they're, they're different different name whatever it's military military stuff okay so I I like to have a bag full of bags because everything is like compartments it's um, kits within kits you know I'm not one of those guys that likes to put a whole like survival trapping kit into my billy can with a bunch of little a little saw and all that. I don't like that at all. I think that's like totally, that's like a joke. Because then every time I have to cook, I gotta dump out a bunch of little small parts of things, you know, it's, that's gone. I'll lose that in a second. It's, that's not practical, that's not real life. Um, what I mean is like having utility pouches, having pouches filled with stuff. And this is my food pouch. It is probably a utility pouch. We have um, 
I don't know, like four different colors now in the shop. This is Coyote Brown. Looks a little weird in the light. There you go. Coyote Brown. I have a uh, vintage OD. And let me move something out of the way. Earth Brown. And last is. Actually, where is the last one? Um, it's Ranger Green. Oh, I think it's. Yeah, it's over here. Right on. I'm actually using an older one. There it is. See, I didn't let you down. Ranger Green. That's the last one. Which has, like, my Bojo kit and stuff, but I'm not bringing it, so. I do have a different pouch in there that I've had for years and years. That was my first one, which is uh, like forest green. Really different. But okay, so we just fill these back in. They all had a nice home a second ago. Okay, so food pouch. I'll show you what's in here with the quickness. Um, I usually do at home, Capolini. This is angel hair. I couldn't find Capolini tonight in the store. This is one pound of pasta. It's pretty concise. Um, dude, I found it like, or in dudettes, whatever. <laughs> I found it, uh, I had to bring the box. Look at this. So I'm gonna block the light so you can actually read. Look at that, pot sized. Angel hair. No need to break, it says. Right on. I saved that box for you to show you. That blew my mind. So I grabbed it. Because it's going to be going right in a billy can. So, right on with that. Um, these things, this is stuff I don't usually bring, but I decided to. Again, very crazy kit. I've, I've, like, I don't think I've ever brought, never have I brought pasta like this. I don't think I have. Not like this. It's nice though, there's no holes, not like macaroni. Macaroni's all air. This is like concise, man. That's pretty cool. So I'm trying that out. So I'm sharing this. I'm trying this out. Sharing it with you guys and girls. I'm trying it out. It's, it doesn't take up any any extra air or anything. It's small. Let's we'll see how it works out. It doesn't waste a lot of water because it's angel hair. Um, Non-frosted. Non-frosted. I can't stand that frosted stuff. Like. I feel like I'm going to destroy my teeth by noon. Um, Pop-Tarts, strawberry ones. Uh, I never never eat these. And certainly not in camp. But why not? Why not? Every once in a while. Like when I go on road trips, I buy uh, arcade cabinets. Um, every couple months I'll buy another game. And I drive like six hours each way sometimes. I'll drive, like I live in Mass. So actually, I live in Rhode Island. But um, I'll drive to like... Like New Jersey, <laughs> like Atlantic City to buy a game. Um, I buy Pop Tarts for the road. Um, right on. So inside here, I have a bunch of tea. I use two bags per mug. And I like to have like two cups by noon. So three days. Uh, Friday, I'm not going to be there, which is tomorrow. I'm not going to be there in the morning. I'm going at night. Um, so whatever. But I still have like an absurd amount of tea because I love tea and I'd rather have too much than not enough there's actually more in here yeah I can just leave it in there last time I ran out of tea in my house and I I went into my bag and used all my tea up in there I do that a lot actually <laughs> it happens it happens like almost weekly um yeah this is something new I've never done this before again this is why I'm doing this this is uh, my buddy Dave's idea in Canada. Sun-dried tomatoes. Um, this is a pesto. So I went with that. It's all I could find at Stop and Shop. I love sun-dried tomatoes. I have them up in uh, my fridge. But uh, yeah. Right on. Why? Well, I'll, I'll tell you in a minute. I'm going to tell you the meals in a second. Maple oatmeal. Uh, usually I eat 
um, Binoc mix every morning, but um, last time I went out was with my daughter, I think it was last time, yeah, and I picked up oatmeal for her, and I, I bought enough for me too, and I liked it. It was nice, because then I could eat Binoc, like at nighttime, as like a loaf, and I could just eat this for breakfast, like, whatever, it's different, and I kind of like it. Uh, this is like one serving, by the way, like three bags. I have more in another bag. I keep one inside my food pouch, and you know, as I need it. Oh, look, more tea. As I need it, I refill it from a different bag. More tea. <laughs> um, this is my uh, like my spice bag. I've gotten a lot of questions about like what's in it. So I guess we'll do a separate video, but, so not today, uh, another day, I, honestly I don't feel like going through all this, but it's like a bunch of stuff. Alright, you know what, why not, okay, so it's like salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, seasoned salt, um, 21 spice by Trader Joe's, um, taco seasoning, sugar, Banak. I like to call it Banak instead of Banak. This isn't even a Banak recipe, and not even close. It's my own kind of concoction. I call it Banak. Um, bouillon cubes, which I'm a big fan of. I'll be using in my dinner because it makes chicken stock. You know. Uh, let's see, flour, which I'll be using for dinner as well. Oh, bell. Bell seasoning, big fan of that stuff. That's the green powder that uh, that your dad uses Thanksgiving. Yeah, that stuff. A little bit of oatmeal. Should probably top it off. Um, inside that packaged, processed junk oatmeal, um, that stuff's like candy. Ooh, it's like too strong. I usually throw. I kind of kind of low on on the stuff. I usually throw some uh, some real oatmeal into it. This is just like whole oats, like whole, whole rolled oats, right? Um, yeah, I think that's everything. Yeah, it's pretty solid. A lot of different flavors in there. Um, yeah, let's talk about dinner real quick. There's one thing actually I haven't added yet. I just realized I need to do it. It's up on top of my fridge. I have a, um, a plastic bottle, like a drink bottle, filled with cooking oil. So the meal I'm gonna be doing, one of the meals, I'm gonna do this twice actually, is chicken stock, so bouillon cubes, and pasta. And cooking oil as the sauce, with, you know, onion powder, garlic powder. But, um, that's magic. That's basically, um, here I am. That's basically, uh, like, um, what's that? Oodles of noodles. I haven't had this since I was 19, maybe. It's been a long time. Less than that. And I could never really, I mean, I used to eat the package. It used to make me sick. I'm allergic, allergic to stuff in that package, but the, that oriental flavor. <laughs> but like two or three. I'd like to save them up. <laughs> oh boy. Anyways, uh, me and my buddy Charlie used to eat some crazy, crazy oodles and oodles. Um, this is like the normal version of that. It's like chicken stock with oil and, uh, and you're good to go. And a little bit of water in there and it's good. So it's kind of like oodles and noodles without all the poisonous chemicals. So. And their, and their noodles are like really inefficient. They're like all wavy and all that. Again, I've never camped with, with the Capellini or Angel Hair, I don't think ever. So I'm looking forward to checking that out. It's usually just a home thing. Okay, I'm gonna throw all this back into my food pouch and I'll get back to you. So the jar, I said I'd see what that was for. Well, um, so tea all day. For snacks, I have um, those blueberry bars. 
in the lid. I have pop tarts, which are good. Actually, I have had these toast uh, toasted on a fire before. My buddy Kevin, um, he he always camps with pop tarts, and I, I always eat his. <laughs> we don't camp together too often. I miss him. Uh, let's see what else. Um, yeah, that's kind of all day stuff. And then for a meal, I'm going to have this twice. I already told you about that, the pasta meal. The other meal will be um, dinner on um, the middle day, Saturday. Uh, I'm going to make something I've never made before in the woods. And that is, and that is going to be um, macaroni and cheese. Ridiculous, right? Macaroni and cheese. And I'm going to um, throw this sun-dried tomato pesto into it to kick it up to unseen levels. Is that food pouch put it aside for just a moment okay the vintage od one has uh my billy can in it and the macaroni and cheese um so i don't have to use milk and butter and all that stuff do you know uh which i could use ghee and i could use milk and whatever but um no thanks um this is that deluxe kind, so like, you know, the cheese is already, like, made, right? So, it's already ready to go. That's my buddy Dave's idea. I'm like, dude, what should I bring? Like, I don't know what to bring. I'm going completely different ways, and he was like, dude, make this. It's amazing. So I did. Okay, so that's going to be that meal. Mac and cheese with sun-dried tomatoes. Pesto. That should be beyond epic. And... My other meal is baked beans. Um, these aren't maple, I don't think. Which is the molasses instead. So, that's kind of a wah wah. But oh well. I'm kind of a maple nut myself. Um, I have something to make tortas and beans, which is a meal that, man, I make a lot of meals that my friends taught me. Um, or told me about or whatever uh, this meal is fix the camera uh, okay this meal tortoise and beans is from my buddy Derek um, he's a main guide and I've known him for I don't know seven years eight years 2010 2010 that's smoke in my eyes, guys. Smoke in my eyes. Oh, anyways, yeah. So, tortoise and beans. Beans and, um, actually, I have a video of us making tortoise and beans. That's what he taught me. Um, it's not going to be Derek. There's no peanut oil. It's going to be sunflower. It's not going to be, it's not going to be the same. It won't be, it won't be true Portuguese tortoise and beans. You're going to have to, you're going to have to deal with, deal with it a little bit. Sorry. But, uh, anyways, <laughs> um, hey, it's gonna be the peanut oil, he's right. Um, I'm, I'm with sunflower on this. Um, Billy Can. I'm a big fan of the Billy Can. This is, uh, it's, it's a Ray Mears thing. Um, he's like, you know, one of those heroes of mine and all that stuff, Morris Gansky and guys like that. Um, little Billy Can by Zebra. Inside here is the um, maple, the backup stash of, of maple. There's three right on top right there, so there's a whole other serving. Grab that, ready to go. Inside is more. Really can. Oh, uh, this is something I did. It doesn't come like this. I, um, I ruined a bunch of drill bits <laughs> and turned it into a steamer. It's a steamer plate. Um, yeah, I was camping out with Dave one time, actually, at a class, and uh, he saw that, and he was like, "That's I like that, that's pretty clever. Um, steamed uh, some frog legs with that, worked out good. Um, yeah, I made a steamer, so I could throw some steamers in there, right, clams, do whatever I want, whatever. Um, I think literally the rest of this billy can is just maple oatmeal. <laughs> because 
yeah. I grabbed three for each serving. And I'm there like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, so that's nine bags. And then I think I grabbed um, two extra servings because I wanted one at night, you know. So I'm there for two nights, so an extra six on top of that, I think. You do the math. I don't math well. Ask my teacher. Don't ask my teachers. Okay, um, that is this pouch done. Yeah, I like these pouches a lot because they can be tool kits, they can be food kits, food pouches, you know, provisions. They're robust, they can hold a lot of stuff. Um, or they can be for pots that are gonna get all dirty and nasty. And inside here, I don't gotta worry about it now. So I can throw it in my kit and it doesn't get everything all dirty and nasty. I don't care about the inside of this bag, you know? And it, that's the same one. That's like, it's just, that's what that bag is. Okay. okay, so to that bag, I've added beans. Which I don't usually take a can of beans with me. I did with my daughter last time. We did tortoise and beans. That's where I got the idea for that. To do that again. So, nice military Velcro. Yes! Love it. I love that stuff. Right on. It's late. I'm tired. I'm a little, a little crazy in the head. Okay, right on. That's the Billy Camp bag. The last pouch. Russ Brown is the uh, Possible's pouch. And this one, you have uh, the usual Possible's. Things I might possibly need. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, it's actually inscribed gray mirrors from 2008 or something. I bought it. It's totally worn off. It's a DC3 by. How do you say? Fall Niven? I think it's. How do you say it's Fall Niven? It's a DC3, a uh, DC4 stone, rather. It's funny, like a couple years ago, I forgot how to say their name. I've just been kind of like, whatever. I don't care. Um, epic stone. Stone has been with me, it sharpened my knife in Vancouver Island. I stake my life on this stone. The stone is, is where it's at. However, yes, they do break. Hasn't broken this way, thank goodness. Um, the epoxy gave out, so I just have to replace it with some fresh epoxy. I mean, you can literally see the glue. Whatever. I've had it for eight years or something, so. The pouch keeps it all there. It's not that big of a deal. Oh, and I can still use both. It doesn't matter. Like, I hold it. I hold it there tight. You know, I still sharpen my knife with it. Okay, sharpening stones as well. I have my Nagura stone. Um, this de rusts my knife or axe or whatever and gives it a mirror edge. The Japanese stone. Um, Grant's furs. Um, axe stone. This is the old one. They don't make the same one. This is the natural quarried stone now they use a like a ceramic synthetic because um, I think they denuded the resource I think they took all the stone it's kind of sad actually so yeah bit of sweet that one all right rope yeah yeah that power cord everyone's talking about Paracord, guys and gals. Um, Baco. This is actually my wife's. I lost mine. Lost mine years ago. Bummer, right? It happens. And my compass. Which really should be in my lid, probably. But I've always kept my compass. This is like my bag of tools, you know? Tool maintenance tools. I've always kept them. Not my knife, though, because 
I want my knife like easy to grab. This is always deep in my bag. I've always kept my compass, my uh, <sighs> my possible pouch. <sighs> so you know, it's there. Right on. Okay, so it's gonna get quirkier. It's gonna get crazy with that stack of uh, handbooks, huh? Pretty cool. You guys know what that is? Do you even know what you're looking at right now? Do you know what that is? Nineteen forty eight. Nineteen No. Yeah, no. Let's see. Nineteen forty two? Oh man, it's terrible. Nineteen forty two. Nineteen forty eight, I think. Nineteen This is a little older. This is nineteen fifty nine, I think. A little shady. This is 1914. That's an oldie. That's a second edition. So it's 1914. This is uh, 1950. This is possibly the best bushcraft book ever written. You know what's funny is that uh, I owned this for a few years and was like, this is like the best book I've ever seen kind of thing, right? And then Moise Gansky, uh did a, a video on books and he kind of said the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you have it too? I couldn't believe it. You probably bought it in 1950 though. Uh, <laughs> oh man, uh, that's a really good book. Um, I don't even know what this is. 1965. 1959-1959. Um, yeah, I think edition wise, this is a sixth edition. Yeah, it's a sixth edition. Oh, this is this is my old scout book. My my handbook. This is tenth edition. It no longer has a cover. It's 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 pretty it's pretty sad. Anyways, this is um what sixth edition. Yeah, so sixth edition. Field manual. 6th edition, 5th edition, 4th edition, 3rd edition, 2nd edition. I'm a little shady on the years, but that's the editions. And I have the 7th edition in my, my bookcase over there. Um, I don't have an 8th edition um, yet. And I don't have... Oh no, I do have an 8th edition. Yeah, I think I found an 8th edition. I didn't even know I had it. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. It's on my shelf. Yeah, I, I also have an 8th edition. Um, I don't have a 9th, though. I'm missing 9th. So I need to get a 9th. Anyways, yeah. Boy Scouts. Right on. I tend to put them in a different order, which is why I was shady in the years. I put them in a different order. I don't really care about the years too much. Or the editions is how I keep track. I, don't, I kind of put them in by size. They, um, they stack easier and they support each other. You know what I mean? Like if I have a small, if I have like a big book like hanging over one of these really small ones, like it's, it bends, it, it, it eventually, eventually damages the book. So this is actually my favorite one. Uh, I think it's a copyright 1948. I know this is a pretty crazy digression. Copyright 1948. Um, this is actually printed in 1952, this particular one. This particular, you know, every whatever it is, three months they print more. But this is the 1948 book. Look at that. Oh, line drawings, oh, plenty. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It's good. It's real good. I really like this one. Again, this might be my favorite one. Had two covers. Had a really awful, like, washed out green cover with some scouts with the old um, wide brim hat. What do they call it? Campaign hats. Then they switched to these, like the cloth, whatever they call it. I forget what they call that. 
like that. So they made a brand new cover. Same artist. Anyways. That's awesome. Okay. So, quirkiness, I said, right? Yeah, my, my behavior is kind of quirky. I know. I'm not apologizing. Okay, so, yeah. Are you, are you guys ready for this? So, I, I, I kind of wanted to go and do some special stuff this time out. So, I went ahead and um, gave myself a treat. This is one of my favorite things to have. I never have enough of it at home. V8. You guys remember V8? This is like the Nature's Promise stop and chop vegetable juice kind, but I love this stuff. Man, this stuff is like drinking is drinking vegetables. So it's not like drinking juice. This isn't like sugary juice garbage that's gonna make me pee a lot and give me headaches and make me cranky. No no. This is this is like fortified vitamin nutrient dense thick energy infused alkaline happy juice that I can have this for a day and just have this for a day I don't even need anything else this this will fill me up this is this is some stuff right here so 100% none of that garbage none of the garbage in there okay the other crazy thing, like I don't bring that camping, you know. I'm I'm bringing a whole container of milk, and it's even whole milk, like legit milk, in 100 degree weather. Why? I, I don't know. Um, if you don't try something, then you'll never know. And this is one of those containers, what the Tetra Pack, that doesn't need refrigeration. Like I bought this off the shelf, you know. I'm gonna leave it in my bag overnight. That's fine. That's how you buy it. Um, you're supposed to refrigerate it after you open it, though. So, you know, I, I don't know what's going to happen there. I'm going to, um, well, I, I have a couple options. I can bury it. I don't plan on bringing a shovel. Um, digging stick takes a long time. It can be done. It, it, I mean, obviously, we've all done it, but, yeah, I don't really want to do that. But if I have to, digging stick. <sighs> but if I bury this down a couple feet, like two feet, We'll stay cool. Stay cool. Keep it tight. Um, let me go get an extra utility pouch. Or maybe I'll just um, throw my backpack when I'm done. And just hope for the best. Hope it doesn't make me sick. I don't know. Let's we'll see what happens. Never done it before. I never like, brought milk like that to the woods. So, yeah, crazy talk. Now, here's something that I haven't brought to the woods in a long time, but I used to bring to the woods every time. This was in my backpack, no matter what, this exact pouch with these items. This is the old forest green native survival utility pouch. Um, I don't even make these anymore. Um, this is my book pouch. It's always hold, held three bucks and I kind of recently added a fourth one like two years ago I guess so waterproof New Testament I don't want to hear that fairy tale stuff me people commenting and all that Jesus is the way he's a savior don't forget this if you don't know it you need to know it the Heavenly Father is real Now, the trifecta, edible plants, medicinal plants, and trees. I don't know, the glare, right? Yeah, anyways, this is it, man. Edible, medicinal, and tree ID. This used to never leave my backpack. I I've gotten away from carrying it, but this is an incredible little library that I carry in my bag. Incredible. That's it right there. Put that in the utility pouch. Has so much utilitarian. So much utility. Give me a possible pouch. 
That's why they call it Possible's Pouch, because then it's just a Possible's Pouch. It can be whatever. Anyways, sign book pouch, a book kit. Um, then I have my spatula next to my axe, which I made last time I was at Gary's camp. When I dried, it got kind of wonky. It's a little sideways. See that? They're kind of sideways. But, uh, I was making cheeseburgers for my daughter, and I needed a spatula, so I made one before I had to flip them over. So I just kind of took a piece of pine laying on the ground and made it happen. And I did a little coal rosing. Uh, let's see. Right on, right on, right on. Okay, then I have a uh, takedown buck saw and a Grandpa's Brooks 24 inch axe designed by Mr. Raymond Mears. Uh, I have two more things in my bag. All the way at the bottom is my native survival bedroll. Uh, I'm not going to pull it out. I think everyone's seen my bedroll at this point. Um, it's a 90% wool blanket with military velcro down the sides and bottom. And um, yeah, I don't want to go to the woods without it. It's it's that big of a deal. I really like I really like that thing. <laughs> it's not a joke. Um, last but not least, inside here is my anchor. So I can charge my phone. Like, I don't know, I've never ran out. Even in winter. So I have the cord with it. Charge my iPhone. So, that's all that is. My kit is crazy for this weekend. Like a bottle of V8. Seriously, it's crazy. Huge, bulky, a big thing of uh, strawberries. Milk. <laughs> I just, I just feel like it. I just feel like it. Uh, macaroni and cheese. What? A jar of, what is it? Sun-dried tomato pesto. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, strange times out here in Wrigley Field or whatever they say. Real time bombs. Um, I think he's taking off one of his socks. Okay, so yeah, it's a cool movie. Anyways, yeah, so this kit is totally weird and um, I just figured I'd show you because it's filled with very bizarre things. Um, but I brought milk for my tea. And I'm going to add a little to the macaroni and cheese. Um, I have oil upstairs I have to add to the kit. Strawberries for all the time. Um, Cliff bars for all the time. Pop tarts for all the time. Mornings. I have uh, maple oatmeal. Um, what else am I eating? I'm eating the bouillon cube pasta twice. Uh, macaroni and cheese at some point and I'm also I feel like I brought too many dinners with me I'm also bringing um, tortoise and beans right on to the, ne to the next level um, yeah bunch of tea just a bunch of stuff this has got to be a 40 pound bag I bet not looking forward to carrying that, but I usually stop at 40 pounds. I'm kind of a 40 pound guy, that's, that's pretty much it for me. So, I think there's a rule you're only supposed to carry um, one quarter of your weight, isn't it? Is that right? My natural weight is like 165, 170, so I guess it kind of makes sense. I think I read in the uh, in the Boy Scout handbook. Um, yeah. Uh, last thing is my bow. It's um, where is it? There it is, right there. I just got my arm guard and my shooting glove. Um, 
I don't think there's anything else in there. And it's a longbow, Montana model by Bear Archery. Well, my friends, i throw that back in. Nothing like shooting a video before you go off to the woods to shoot videos. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'll be shooting some more pretty soon. Um, I guess that's pretty much it. So there's my bizarro, ridiculous, over-the-top weekend rig. I mean, I've got like a bottle of V8 in there. It's just, it's crazy talk. So I figured I'd share it because it's like probably will never happen again. It's going to be one of those bizarro weekends. Um, and, you know, if Stop and Shop had um, bananas that were in season and were ripe, I would have brought some whiskey and chocolate as well. Because that's where I'm at. So, anyways. Alright, well, I wonder if Shane's going to bring some. He did it last time. I don't know. Anyways, um, that's it. This is Mitch. Mitchell with Native Survival School. Logging out of this video. Alright, catch you guys later. See ya.